before I show you the um, documents themselves I've uploaded a zip file of them to Internet Archive and I'll leave a link for them so that you don't have to pause and stop if you were interested in looking at it any further. Uh, I've put extra information in. The uh, information that is on the front page here with the PDF and the Word documents uh, what I received via email from Richard Moat. Except for this one here, which is the uh, when I've put in the initial inquiry, they sent me back the NCV info August 2020. It's a one page PDF that told you less that, than what any of the documentaries did. or whatever promos you'd call them and uh, the only thing that this uh, girl I can't remember her name told me was um, the price and ask about the uh, discount and that was a 10% discount for settlement within um, uh, well 30 days yeah so um, in the other folders, I'll just show you here, well in the other folder you've got uh, Proper Way by Bin R. Powell which is the uh, protocols that Adrian Brennock makes reference to in the Nightcap documentary and it's these protocols written by this Bin R. Powell. Now it's not very long, I couldn't find uh, a you have to buy it but I was able to uh, flick through and do a video of the pages of the book so in here in Bina there's um, an mp4 that shows you what's written in those protocols that Adrian's talking about And in uh, there is also to the Freedom, Freedom Summits that uh, Mark Darwin organised, and it was the um, it was Mark Darwin and Adrian Brennock who was promoting this in Nimbin that uh, this person uh, got a two-hour video of. And they cut down certain parts of that video and put it online and this is essentially describing in the two parts that uh, did I stick them in here no, no I didn't um, it's called recreating the village about the company set up and how it's been deliberately set up to not be um, revealing those who are hidden behind it so if the bank came to try and repossess it they can't repossess anything you know and the tax office can't find anyone to be avoiding taxes and things like this I mean it is very clear in this uh, video that these two parts that it has been set up to avoid um, any outside body observing their income and thereby avoiding um, any kind of taxes on that and to also set up their own bylaws which I was actually shocked when I read them that well they've got their own fines and penalties and because of the one naysayer this poor Gillian Norman well, actually, I could find the names of at least three other people that were involved in um, losing their money out of these um, things that are all tied together. And I don't want to get too much into the the company's set up right now because uh, I'll just show you that here. All right, let's go back up to the top of the list. According to all the information in all the documentation so far and everything given out by other people, I have 
looked up all the people that are members, are known members, declared members. So they're not anonymous, they're declared members, which then makes them actually a known person that is attempting to hide behind an anonymous trust. And most of them are using it to funnel businesses behind. Because in looking at the um, questionnaire that I got sent through, the first thing they want to know is, what do you do? Because that was one of the things, I, when I saw it, I went, hmm, yeah. Because all you want are professionals and people with skills and trades that can just add to your image. Now, all of these names I have garnered from, uh, let me just show you, these two documents as well. Because these, uh, this involves members of an incorporated association and a community trust that later changed its name to a different name because of the bad name that was associated with Bulla Bulla. So this is all associated with the same members. It's just that when Mark Darwin sort of had a bit of trouble, um, you know, they put other people to the front to take over the charge. But here it actually tells you, I copy and pasted the um, all the judgment summaries so that I could follow them in a sequential order. And contrary to what uh, Gunham says in uh, the video, that there were, well, first of all, it was 14 cases against Gillian Norman and she lost every one of them. Then it became 15. And, well, there's only two cases involving Gillian Norman and one of them she's suing Rothwell Wall who is the solicitor taking in the funds for this community and as you can see here this Wollumban Horizons here is actually associated with both setups uh, and that links the public face now um, <laughs> pretty much the judgment line they got it all pulled off Facebook and then and Google and everywhere and you couldn't search it but it's all spilled out and you know where to find it because oh the idiot pointed it out you know in having to say oh we beat her he was bragging about oh we won just check out the Supreme Court well I did because all those accusations are now part of court proceedings and the judgment summary and so pretty much all the uh, accusations that have um, this uh, Gillian Norman wrote about five different blogs at different times about her experience now she's an old age pensioner she's paid over a hundred and twenty thousand to buy into this place Things have gone wrong. They've got kicked off the land. Not only her, but everybody else because the council came in and found, said, you know, nobody can inhabit here. So everything fell through. Julia Norman, Ron Berry and others asked for their money back. And uh, they're pretty much told to go to buggery. So <laughs> in that, she writes a series of blogs now, in slandering the, the project, um, Adrian Brennock and his other cronies went and got a, an expensive lawyer and sued Gillian Norman. And because she had trouble... <laughs> she's an age pensioner, for crying out loud, and she's just lost everything she, she has, and what she says is a scam. She lived there, she knows the people and the, and the people involved. And there were at least three other people that backed up this information. You can check it out in the court documents. And even the fact of how um, shonky the, the setup is. 
Now you look here at the parties involved. The uh, four plaintiffs here. Uh, I've uh, done both at six searches and uh, Australian business name register searches. Now I've given out some information in the past about uh, business searches and it seems like they've changed it around a little bit and it it seems like that maybe ATSIC and the ABN register need to be searched concurrent together because uh, I found that while it used to be that everything used to have an ABN and then have a th that extra layer at ATSIC now I'm finding that they're not necessarily linking up and I'm finding because of companies that are mentioned in this court document companies like uh, let's get rid of them again Oops. Um, all these business names like all oh, these ones aren't mentioned in the court document they're men mentioned in the business plan these ones all through here uh, Derek Zillman is actually mentioned in the court document in association with Zimmerland who is also a co-developer of the property in question and the, the, the case so I've gone through and like with the Sphinx Rock Cafe and the Mount Bar Burrell Caravan Park these are businesses that the Nightcap Community Village are said to control now as these are already registered businesses uh, to say that they come under the community banner and that they are businesses of the community the people that run these businesses must also be members of um, the anonymous fund thereby by association you are not anonymous and it can be proven who you are associated with uh, this comes down to a lot of the cases where the uh, the three-tiered system was set up so that there was a proprietary limited public face company that would then go back to some type of incorporated association with anonymous members that would then be also tied back to the community itself and so that the the profits could funnel in and and back out, you know through anonymously without anyone checking what was going on now in the original setup the originating community was the Bulla Bulla community and that was the Mount Eco village that was Mount Warning Eco village that was the I dare say the incorporated association to hide that behind and then the Wollumbin Horizons to actually um, be the public face that they could actually buy things and exist in the real world in so when it all fell through with Mark Darwin and they brought other members of the trust up they changed the name and this is what I'm assuming because uh, it follows through and in a, I can actually, I'm not actually assuming because you can actually make the connection between uh, the name change from Bulla Bulla to the Minjumbul trustee which is um, the trustee for the Minjumbul tribal discretionary and it was registered only the 21st of November last year so um, around 10 months ago so these are all new things that have come out that um, recently were not available when the final court judgments were made and ultimately the court judgment that was made that um, Gunham says that they were successful at the final conclusion of all of that was that Gillian Norman was going to the higher court and taking action against them at a higher level and the case she was taking against the lawyer she was getting pro bono for that to take it to the higher court because it was all associated 
and to have it all heard under the one rip-off scam that she was claiming and that um, under those circumstances the judge made the final ruling so that it would be taken to the next level so the case isn't over and the fact of the very first legal proceeding that started in the case was also going for defamatory uh, in, 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 <laughs> injurious uh, the judge laughed that out of court and he ruled in Gillian Norman's favour and said no you've got no hope of getting any money for injury because you're saying you're not associated so how can you claim any injury you know and it's very questionable whether anything actually exists to claim injury on so that ruling was made in the very first place so they just went on the defamation not the injury you know so in the um, case where it was dismissed uh, or not dismissed the judgment uh, there was defamation awarded for uh, two defendants uh, two um, plaintiffs which was Adrian Brennock and um, hang on yes it's Adrian Brennock and Philip Dixon who received 200,000 defamation of this age pensioner plus costs and I probably oversimplified the judgment because you can see here it's page 13 and there's 50 57 pages this goes into a very big breakdown but essentially because Gillian Norman uh, was unable to tie the two cases with Rothwell Roth well wall together the the solicitor taking the funds and this it it, it got um, and she couldn't get l she was going for a pro bono lawyer she was waiting for help but she didn't have the money to pay for expensive lawyers like these guys where they're spending other people's money and uh, hey it's not me that tells you they're spending other people's money it's Gunham he tells you that you've got to be careful when you're spending other people's money. So he knows damn well that he's spending other people's money. So right now it stands that there's a $400,000 uh, defamation that is a judgment against Julia Norman that she's supposed to pay. And there was uh, given to with the Rothwell wall case where she was suing there was given the time until a certain time in the end of August for her to file court documentation to take the breach of fiduciary trust with the solicitor and his duty of care and what <laughs> well you know I mean, what do you expect? Do you ex actually expect to have honourable, fully respected and easily registered and qualified and all these other people set up in these shonky deals? And uh, ultimately, she's, she's a woman on her own that has tried to represent herself in court. She's had another person that's come with her but it sounds like he doesn't know much so he sort of stayed back and just let her speak for the both of them and there's someone else that confirms what these two are saying about it and also a third one so there's at least four people but they couldn't prove it to the ability of the court and this is what was said in this court document but you see a lot of this was taking into consideration information that was garnered in 2016 and 17 you know there are new facts that have come out and it's amazing when people think that they've got nothing to worry about anymore <laughs> I mean look at the way that Adrian Brennock feels that he needs to justify the um, the court case why did he just not say nothing at all why did Gunham just not say anything at all Nobody 
would actually know anything about it because it was actually taken out of any ability to search it on YouTube. So it was by their instigation and their insistence, you know, that they were hard done by and she was the one that not only made everybody else lose their money but cost them so many millions, you know, and it was like, oh, she's a terrible, terrible woman. Well, as part of the uh, things that I've uploaded to the Internet Archive is this um, bookmarks on individuals and other corporate entities involved, which is a copy of... Uh, where are we? All these links. You click on click on them they will take you directly to the record associated with it and you can read it for yourself now as I said all these are garnered from the documents uh, not only the court documents but promotional documents confirmation from other people like uh, Ad Adrian Brennock confirmed that Binar Powell was a member of the community so there are lots of known community members. So I'll just full screen that. This is, oh, I said it was a one page PDF. It might as well be. This was the first PDF I got as the initial response. As I said, there's a copy of that. Just a, a few basic, you know, size of the block and that sort of, sort of stuff. Then, uh, yesterday, yes, I found um, in my spam, it was like, uh, oh, <laughs> it's only been there since the 15th of September, and uh, it was an email from Richard Moat. Um, I've also put a copy of that in the zip file if you wanted to read that. So I've just uh, got rid of my email address and name because, you know, don't need to stick that out there. Anyway, so this is basically all from down here. I got two emails that were sent only a couple of minutes apart. First is, um, due to the deluge of inquiries following the recent videos featuring Max and Gunham. Okay, so we're on to Max and Gunham there. Then it goes into a little bit of a spiel you know about B our friend Binar Pal. mind you they don't send a copy of the exact ones and this part here as well that was attached to the bottom of the first email along with warm regards Richard Moat and uh, phone number then um, we go on to the next email that came through, which was, oh no, look at this. Please accept our apologies. However, the powers that should not be decided that the content of Max Egan's Crow House channel, blah, 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 blah. Um, if you wanted to read that before I go on to the next part or, um, or look it up yourself, you can. Um, so it goes in to mention other people in there too, confirming from the other documentation that Don Tolman, Tyler Tolman and Pete Evans are also members of the community. And uh, where is it here that, um, hang on, it was right in front of me, you can't see for looking. Well, it's hard to talk and read at the same time. So here it says, Max is a highly valued member of the community now and will be producing his shows and content from the farm more and more now. On another and a really exciting note, we are proud to announce that our newest member of the community is celebrity chef, activist and health advocate, Pete Evans. So. I don't have to guess at Max Egan's connection with Gunham and the Nightcap community because 
Richard Mote, the nightcap realtor, who replied to me, told me, and if you notice here, he referred to uh, the nightcap community as Gunham's land. <laughs> yeah, I'm not making any of this up. This is what I got in the email. So we've got Max Egan that is a valued member now. Now, how did Max Egan buy into it? Or did someone give him $285,000? No, this is where... Let's go to uh, this document. I think it's in this one. Nope. <laughs> well, then it's got to be the other, doesn't it? Yep, there we go. So here we talk about uh, the same setup. That um, there's a $20,000 finder's fee. And it was said that that finder's fee was going to be reinvested back into the community. Well, Mark Darwin disappeared after that. He went to the UK and came back and, you know, he's not doing his Truthology or his Freedom Summits anymore. But, uh, okay, so let's move on to the next thing. Which is, how does a man that's got no means of income other than from his Patreon account from people that donate to him, from people that give him things, how does he afford to buy $285,000 in to that community? Or did he get a valued member discount, maybe got in for half price? But even so, that's still 140000 is half price. Now you can see um, in 2017 they were valued at 120, now they're 285, and you get a $10,000 discount if you settle within three di uh, 30 days. So it's there by putting pressure on people with disposable cash, untraceable cash often, like you can't get it back. Um, and once it's gone, it's gone. So where did Max Egan, even as a valued member and with a discount, and even a super duper special discount at even 50% off, let's say 140000 where did he come up with all of that? He already said he was broke in 2017 when he put out his, you know, his perspective on Zen Gardner and the Ken O'Keefe scam. So he was busted ass broke even sold his guitars and he's ended up renting a small little garage that he calls the Crow House in the Corumban Valley. So where ultimately is Max Egan getting this money from? And if he has got this money from everybody that's donated to him, well, then you could be guaranteed it's not declared income. And if he has got that kind of an income that has gone untaxed, that would be considered tax fraud. And considering he's using a false name and he's also using a foundation name that to take donations in that isn't even a registered charity or donation, um, charitable or non-profit organisation, you know, that is just one aspect of fraud that is going on. So if you wanted to, um, as I said, read any of these documents for yourself, I've uploaded them to the Internet Archive and I'll leave, leave a link. So, um, oh yes, I'm sorry, I didn't tell you that... Um, I had a... 
this had a heap of attachments as well and those attachments were um, there was the questionnaire as well I was going to show you that but yeah okay so this is suggestion suggested viewing from AB uh, which is Adrian Brennock so talking about Peter Evans showcasing NICAP. While you were preoccupied, one of Max Egan's, another one of Max Egan's. See, this is why they put out the um, in the email about how the links didn't work because he, they had obviously given out links to YouTube and his channel had been put down because yes, there's all these Max Egan ones just to make sure that you understand that the good thing about coronavirus is that you need to you know go to a different place where you need to make a treaty with the tribe and serve under another law so that when you leave the property you're serving that law too you're serving two masters I'm not talking about anybody serving anyone I think none of us need to serve anybody but ourself and within that be the better of ourself and the greater good okay that's an idealistic perspective and don't ask me to how are you going to achieve that seriously people you've got to start by looking within yourself to achieve anything for years I kept making the same mistakes and because I kept making the same choices because I had emotions tied to them that I couldn't let go of and you know I kept beating myself up over the head why can't I just change the way I look at something and then one day it just suddenly dawned on me it's because of the emotional perspective that we have on something the attachment that we put on that content that stops us from looking at it at, from a different perspective like even though I've gone through plenty of bad experiences in my life you know I always think well you know what every second it's all passing to history and a memory and one day you never know this will be valuable experience that you know I've learned from so even mistakes are good because you learn from them and if you learn from them and don't make them again <laughs> it's good but you see I was always a giver and I used to attract a lot of people to me like a moth to a flame I'm a giver they're a taker and you can imagine how that worked but anyway I'm getting off subject here this is um, back to the PDF that was sent so yes the COVID test we all know that it's not a test for what it's not a yeah. let's repeat it a hundred times because uh, how many videos has he done that he said the same things in but there are some other videos that, um, not the pandemic one, the uh, too expensive to grow your own food and other things like that. But I've also on my internet archives, hang on, I'll just show you that for a sec. Oops. sorry I should have paused and waited all right I've got a whole heap of stuff on there now up until these last two archives that I put on there this internet index here has got this and all these others in there oh there's more no no more so if you actually want to look at gardening too there's a couple of videos here on permaculture uh, they're actually done in Australia I found them very interesting uh, looking at what was going on there there's lots of um, stuff that I've got together for gardening and growing vegetables and um, medicinal things and all the different sorts to do with um, the environment and not only food as 
as the environment. I mean, uh, plants as the environment, but um, as food, as uh, medicine, and well, I suppose you could say it is as the environment because you know every time a plant's destroyed, that's less um, regeneration of the uh, what we exhale and less oxygen being put back in that we actually breathe. And that's kind of one thing that I um, found a little bit interesting about how there was, because these alternative communities have very big food prejudices. If you're not a vegan, you know, there's something wrong with you, you know, and if you eat meat, oh, wow, they'll sit there and look at you and try and ask, try and convert you. It, like yeah convert you like it's it's some kind of religion but that's very interesting because that's actually where is the um this is the questionnaire this is what they want to know before they'll look at whether you can get it get in or not and there's um all these different questions that yeah they really want to know what you can do for them, what skills you can bring to the table, because they're not interested. If you're um, a mother with kids, I mean, you're going to upset the community more, you know. So really, this is sort of like, um, yeah, it seems more like a retirement village, but we've got these younger ones like Pete Evans and Tyler um, Tolman, and others, I dare say, uh, Adrian Brennock, trying to bring that younger face so that you get the impression that it's a young, vibrant community. But in all the images I see, even in the documentation that they give you with all the images, I see guys, more guys and guys. Right, just hang on, I'll bring up uh, Binna Powell's picture. Okay, this has been our pal. You know, I swear I've seen him sleeping in the gutter at Nimbin somewhere after he staggered out of the pub or he come down or something. But then again, maybe he just looks like a, a lot of old wasted units out there. <laughs> this is the man that wrote the protocols of the community to live by and the standards that are implemented by the dominance of these males is um well let me show you in the uh are we on the com no that's more about the community management statement uh, amended by Gunham March 7th, two th 2019. That shows up as two because in the second email I got a copy of this again and another copy of the questionnaire. Don't know why it showed up as two instead of one like it does, it does with others. But it goes through pretty extensively there. Oh, what I didn't say about the questionnaire is that it does actually ask about your fruit food preferences and what I found interesting too was when they asked the question about what's your perspective on guns and I thought wow that's a weird question to ask and then I thought well no not really because in the videos I've done you know a few weeks back when I was talking about alternative communities they've got a shit ton of illegal guns that are buried looked after easily accessible that um, yeah you, you do a raid on the property where are you going to dig up to find it so um, the thing is that in that scenario I envisaged something a little bit um, more dramatic than than what I think is actually going to happen because I really don't think that the government is going to need to do anything like that because uh, with the kind of uh, tools that are available today and with the bushfire season coming up, I think it's quite easy to direct certain things into certain places. Because another interesting thing that was brought up by Max Egan too was, um, hang on, I'll take you back to another video. 
when he did one of these videos in April, I think it was this one here, um, the one on the left, he mentioned something about a hemp farm as one of the businesses associated with it. And <laughs> I think he was speaking a little bit out of term there and it's like, what? Are you kidding me? They've got a hemp farm? No way. Because when I found out that there were hemp farms in the um, legal hemp farms, these are grown by the government, okay? Um, there are communities uh, in the larger area of the northern New South Wales area where there are legal hemp farms that grow it for uh, the legal industry, for the medicinal industry, okay? So, um, and I found this out by moving to the town because, you know, it's amazing what people tell you is going on. It, it's good gossip. But nobody in the town in Nimbin would actually be able to do that or any of the pot smokers because you cannot have any history of drugs or alcohol and you've got to have a completely clean you know history whereas you know i'm only guessing here but you know gunham's definitely like you look at some of the videos of him you know i look like that when i was about to give birth mate and look at that, he's got the same, same alcoholic nose. I'd say both boys have done a lot of drinking over the years. Whether they're active, whether they're sober alcoholics, I'd say they're both sober alcoholics, otherwise you wouldn't have one sober and one drunk alcoholic, so they'd both be so sober alcoholics. Who knows, maybe even that's where they met 15 years ago, or 10 to 15 years ago at AA. But anyway, so Max Egan says he's not an alcoholic because he doesn't drink anymore. And then if he'd gone, gone to Alcoholics Anonymous, and anyone knows about alcoholics, that uh, if you're an alcoholic, you're always an alcoholic. It's only the day sober. You know, you can lapse at any time. So I'm just making a wild guess there that um, given the fact that um, I don't see a legal hemp crop being grown at the Nightcap community, I see them perhaps funding every year with crops grown on tribal land that, you know, they won't let crops enter and they've got no reason to enter because until Max Egan mentioned it, nobody bloody knew it was there. It's like, yeah, loose lips sink ships, don't they, Max? I didn't say this again. Max is. And I'm only surmising. I mean, it could be all perfectly innocent for all I know. But what I do know is that Max Egan, on his last upload tonight, actually mentioned that he's got... You know, no intentions of moving from there. And as I've already shown you, that he's going to be doing broadcasts from the community. And the thing is that once he's actually got enough people that have bought into it, because, you know, everybody will be saying, oh, you know, I um, saw you on Max Egan. And so those ones that end up buying that did that, Max Egan's going to get a finder's fee for and when he gets enough like I dare say he's accrued enough in finder's fees now to pay for his land so now he's going to organize to build his house on and to get the comforts of it he needs to bring in more people and to ensure that he's got a good income because he's going to disappear after he gets enough money you know stashed away you know, away from the government's eyes that they never knew he even got, you know, um, yeah, he'll disappear. But he won't disappear until he, he starts to make up this story. He'll probably make up something like, you know, people are after him and he thinks he's going to be killed. And so that, you know, like he's already said in the last video, if he doesn't put out a video every couple of days, people think he's something's happened to him. I mean, seriously, does he think the world's waiting on his every moment just because a couple of people 
have got nothing better to do than to wait for another version of the same thing repeated the day before, but now we can hear it today. We'll just listen to yesterday's and, you know, don't have to wait. Because he doesn't really tell you anything else. He just keeps on with the same circle. And I'm probably going in circles here too. Hang on. I'll just put on something different here and finish it up. So this is what um, I found very, very informative. 62 pages of a development report from Planet Consulting. That would cost a hell of a lot of money. I mean, it's glossy and it's flash. Again, that comes from the Nightcap Village community. And here we've bought into another business name associated with it. There's actually, oh, look, I'll take, I'll just drag down here quickly so you can have a, as I said, if you wanted to have a look at it all, go to, um, the PDF itself. Now this is all the lots involved in the Nightcap Village and 1584.38 hectares is just nearly 3,900 something acres. Oops. Now yes as I said, see take a look here. I'll just zoom that out a bit. Guys, Go and look at the videos where they're going around with a guy. They're, they're talking to a guy. Then, and all the people that, um, pretty much all the people that are on that um, uh, list, oh, the web page that I did of all the bookmarks of all the different company and name searches, male, male, male. It's all male. This is not going to be a family-friendly or kid-friendly community. It just, you know, it might look like on the surface, but it's, oops, I'll zoom it back out again. It's 62 pages and this has already gone on long enough. I want to finish it up. Oh, give me back the, thank you. Because uh, it mentions here, this is where uh, I find out, you know, you scan f through and find out what information is in there. Because all of this is just set up. There's three different entrances to the property. One thing I find interesting here is that this is what's going on, the preferred development. Now, this part mentioned here. this place of worship uh, yes this place of worship here could actually classify that as under a type of cult it's large it's going to attract a community of over a thousand people they will all be going into the same mindset but it's not so hard to deal with a problem in a lot of respects if bushfires suddenly strikes up there. Now, it's not known to burn up there, but, you know, after thinking about what the country's like, there's, there's a lot of um, paddocks that have got long, dry grass in them. And there's also... Um, There's also lots of leaf ladder and weeds that have died off and things like that that have, have accumulated even around water areas. And one thing I found too, and uh, my daughter found out when we burnt some uh, green gums, uh, they're very combustible because of the oil content in them. So any particular kinds of trees, doesn't matter how green they are, they are going to, well, because of the oil in them and how strong they it might be, they will actually spark out, like they will spit. And if, um, as she found, if you're standing too close to the fire, it can get you. But um, 
let's take it down to see these are all um, things associated with other properties as well and as all the facilities there now where is it that uh, the entrances hang on I'll pause it and find it uh, yeah before I found what I was looking for this is just showing the concept of the sub subdivision so these are the existing ones that are already within what they've purchased which is nearly 4,000 acres now look at the proposed lots yeah, I might need a little bit more reading to understand that a little bit better but um, on face value that looks what it looks like so this what I found was very interesting information because here we've got four different sectional owners that would all fall within this um, three-tiered corporate structure all coming back to the um, Minjimbal Trust that can't be traced on who is in it but you can actually trace because there's already declared members of it and um, there's at least um, Dean uh, Rottenbury, uh, what's that? Is that his name? Hang on, I can't remember what Dean's last name. I met Dean. Um, yeah, Dean and the other elders or Aboriginals that um, were on the community video. So they would be members of the Minjimbal. And by the, that, members of the associated incorporations and the businesses that feed off it and back into it and the businesses that feed back into it include the Sphinx Rock Cafe, the Mount Burrell Caravan Park, the Mount Burrell General Store, the Fruit and Veggie Store and an empty shop which I don't know what's leased out in that. Now when it comes to the Mount Burrell, Burrell Caravan Park I noticed in the video that Gunham didn't want to say too much about the car caravan park and he said oh he doesn't really know about it and it's like oh bullshit mate you don't know about caravan parks it is one of the most highly regulated things in northern New South Wales and everybody complains about it because there's a two-week rule you can only go to a caravan park for two weeks and then you have to move on and there are um, very specific guidelines set down by council most of them even if they're run by a private business that private business has to have some kind of council supervision so I dare say that the Mount Burrell Caravan Park which when I was there wasn't even being used because uh, it was run down and they didn't meet council standards so it, it hasn't been an operating business as such so I think that when he said he doesn't want to wet his gunpowder what they're going to try and do is get that area where the caravan park is rezoned from the caravan park into some other type of area where they can bring in other members of the community at, on a temporary or long-term renting basis or whatever like that but there is that thing with caravans and uh, caravan parks is that there is a certain amount of allotted caravan parks and spaces in towns and places and that is so because you can't sleep on the side of the road in your car you'll get moved along you you have to go to a caravan park or a paid accommodation if you're 15 k's within any paid accommodation you have to go there you can't sleep on the side of the road and considering that there are so many beds and breakfasts and all these other different businesses scattered throughout these hills you know you're never going to be 15 k from any of them so essentially you know there's no camping other than in the caravan parks and only a few of them will actually allow you to tent and so thereby everything is very highly restricted so I dare say that this not wetting the gunpowder thing that um, Gunham's talked about is uh, trying to get it rezoned 
and reapplied to a different type of business model that will fit in with the nightcap community. So these um, these ones here are all in, uh, included in the bookmark searches that um, I included on the Internet Archive. If you wanted to click on these direct searches and have a look for yourself. Well, I've been waiting for the last five minutes for the noise to stop. I think it has now. I've forgotten what I was talking about. and um, But it was this company anyway. Now, um, here it looks like that these are individuals, but they actually trace back to proprietary limited companies and discretionary trusts and other entities that are anonymous. When I saw the guy's name, Peter Van Lies Out, that's what I saw, Lies Out, instead of Lie Shout. I'm pr it's probably pronounced differently. but So these different addresses here that I've also incorporated in those bookmarks uh, to give property information. There's only property information on a couple of them all the rest are not listed that's because they come under a different category of land and you need to look more at what goes on with the misty mountains and uh, camps and accommodation and all the other things because this is a lot bigger than what I first thought and this is all leading back to places where any income that is received is tax-free. That's the appeal of it to the investors. It's tax-free income and the government won't know what you're earning. And the setup because of that is what they use to justify that. But on the other side of it, that if you breach these community guidelines which, where are we? Dealing with community breaches, changing the bylaws, conflict resolution, dealing with bylaw breaches, penalties and fines. So essentially here, that if you don't abide by their terms and conditions, you can be penalised and fined. And I dare say when you come to sign the nitty gritty of the contract, there's also an out there that if you are voted out of the community, you have to leave. And once you're kicked out of the community, you cannot come back and they're not going to give you anything when you leave other than, well, you had your chance. Give me my money back then. No. Well, I'm going to go get it back. Prove it. Prove it. And that is what Gillian Norman faced. So you need to look at all the details and the implications of it because ultimately, as Adrian Brennock said, some are more equal than others like Adrian Brennock is more equal and Gunham is more equal and Max is more equal and so are all the others that they've named. So if you go against their opinion, you'll get out of the get kicked out of the community and you won't have any cause, any legal ability to come back and get any money back unless you can prove what oh, so is two playing sorry they're making a noise I'm trying to ignore them um, yeah you need to consider about uh, as I found out in the community there were things that they said that I didn't agree with and as long as I didn't voice my opinion it was fine 
But as soon as I started to say, well, you know, that's not really the way I look at it because, you know, looking at it from a mother's perspective and blah, 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 you know, it, that's when I started to get on the outer. Or well, not even talking at it from a mother's perspective, but just as another human being that has a different perspective on, you know, the formation of the universe or how things work or anything like that. You have to comply, in, be in agreeance. And if you look at Max Egan, he does what so many of them do. They talk to ones they know that will self-validate their opinion and not question it. Anyone that would question it gets blocked and would never get an interview. And predominantly, you could actually name a larger controlled narrative simply by the ones that support Max Egan so much. And some of those include uh, Vinnie Eastwood, uh, Richie Allen, uh, Kev Baker. And even though I haven't heard him um, uh, on Max, I've, um, I'm going to mention Art Bell because I listened to something Art Bell and George Norrie or whatever his name is the other day. This guy's been around for years and years and years and he's talking in an interview like he was just born yesterday and knows nothing. Or is he just the biggest smart ass? You know, and the way that he tries to control the narrative by yes you're right, yes you're right or how do you know that? And and he puts it in a way as if that's confirming, yes, I agree with that and then how do you know that is is kind of he puts down that guy into having to defend that position now rather than saying, Well, I agree with that. So yes, that's correct. So if this other guy says it and he says Yes, that's correct. So, what? It's correct because this guy said, yes, it's correct? How does he know it's correct? He doesn't know it's correct. He's just guessing at it. So, anyway, this is all part of the reason why I am doing this expose on Max Egan. Not only are people going to be exploited and could find themselves up in very big financial ruin, and maybe even buying into something. Imagine if bushfires did go through this year. It's a possibility. You would not, it would not only destroy if that hemp crop is actually <laughs> an illegal one. Well, there goes the sideline, you know, profiteering in the market. And uh, if you burn it down, if it gets burnt down, which there's plenty of fuel there because there's already enough land that's already been logged and cleared and a certain amount that has to be logged and cleared as part of the development. So where you've got logging and clearing, there are always remnants that need to get burned off so that they don't cause bushfires. Now, unless they've got rid of those, um, which most of them are, you know, the knotty bits that you can't chop up and use for firewood so they get left behind in one big pile. And if you've got enough of those piles, they are tinder boxes that will set fire to those very combustible eucalypt leaves and catch in the, the thick, and it is thick grass, because you have to imagine a lot of the grass in these areas are not um, cut each year. It's just like the dead grass grows you know maybe a meter or two high it'll die off then the green grass the next season will go up through it and that'll die and it just keeps making it thicker and thicker and thicker and that creates a lot of dry stuff in amongst there so even though it's not a known area for bushfires you know it it's feasible. I mean, in 2020, anything's possible, isn't it? Who knows? But I didn't want to make this a long video, and I've probably talked for too long anyway, and people will complain that I yak too much. Well, you know, when you've got a lot of stuff to talk about, get over it. <laughs> uh, 
these are all the uh, little black dots you see there are all the proposed lots for the Nightcap community or Gunham's land that Max is now a member of and that uh, people that are buying into it I dare say that have done so on Max's recommendation or because of the promotion that Max has put forward for it and I also mentioned too that uh, in uh, before Max did his uh, interview with Ricardo Bossi, I did an interview, uh, an interview, a video where I said that don't be surprised if he brings someone out, if he goes political, blah, blah, blah. And sure enough, that's exactly what he did. You know, he copped a little bit of flack for that, for selling out, you know. But then again, it's not the only thing that Max Egan has done this year that is highly questionable I mean for all these years he's been touting you know that you need to participate and and um, you know in your community and and not go to alternative communities to fix because you need to fix where you are and he keeps saying not to do that and now it's like well you know he's got his membership which is it costs money to get that membership okay it doesn't come free and if it does come free he must be really good friends with Gunham that good a friend that he's going to give up one lot worth two hundred and eighty five thousand dollars come on no he's getting rewarded two hundred and eighty five thousand dollars worth because of all the people that he brings in and if he's lucky enough, that number will be in the hundreds and a finder's fee for all that. Well, as I said, you expect Max, when he's got enough people that have bought into this community, to retire. Now, if it all falls through, which um, I've considered taking this to the proper people to get them to actually do a proper job this time and actually put these um, people out of business because you know even when I was a kid visiting my grandfather and, and grandmother on the Gold Coast at Burley Heads you know I always talk about some bloody builder and real estate scam not only there but New South Wales and you go on to current affair, I guarantee you there's even one this year about some building scam. There's always building scams. And this area, this larger area that goes over into southeast Queensland, is just a whole bunch of building cons that suck in people and they end up with empty pockets and nowhere to go and no way to get it back. And if you do your research, if you're even thinking about spending money on anything, you need to do your research. You need to know exactly who these people are that they're dealing with, that you're dealing with. And if you're dealing with something that looks like, um, well, imagine that if something went wrong and you needed to exercise your legal rights out there in the real world where the majority of people are living and trying to fix things imagine if you went to a court of law and said right i've had this particular problem if you cannot prove who the people are involved with that problem behind um, a discretionary trust or some kind of trust or a um, incorporated association or anything that hides the people behind it you have got no chance if anyone's using those those uh, mechanisms it should be a red flag to you that um, they're trying to hide things and if they are found out everything will be lost which means that if this larger development folds anybody that's invested in it will lose their money and whether you go to jail or not has been involved in that fraud because when you make deliberate choices to try and earn an income outside of the tax system 
and you are trying to hide it behind entities that exist in a tax system sooner or later you are going to trip up and if you can trip up enough that I can figure out what's going on if you've already confessed to certain things that you know out of your own mouths by that of Gunnams and Adrian's that these things have come out of their mouth you need to really think carefully about who you are trusting I mean seriously do you really want to trust someone that looks like they've spent more time in a pub and getting drunk than they have in the real world and how like I tried um, you know <laughs> I, I don't know whether saving a, a friend that you know he's he's still an active alcoholic but whether they're active or not it doesn't matter there is a certain amount of bitter bitter narcissism um, hate the world you know um, very cynical and it would explain a lot of um, Max's negative outlook on things you know that the you all you can look forward to being microchipped and vaccinated and in his latest one the babies all the babies I mean like you're dealing with serious issues and all he does is just generate fear around it you know and that's not helping anyone because when it comes down to it there are very few in Australia that are experiencing those actual extremes right now the people in Victoria that are experiencing those extremes well and in other countries that are I know that I'm not experiencing them and a larger majority aren't and you think well you can't appreciate them well I can appreciate them but constantly creating the same stuff about you know the vaccines and and all of these other things and the fear about lock borders and and Danny dictator and all these other things it's not helping you to live in the now moment and actually try and find a way that's positive through it see the only way to not have fear about a situation is to actually change the way you think about it and the way you're emotionally attached to it now someone keeps you emotionally attached to a situation through fear and through all the oppressive mechanisms that are around you um, you really need to ask yourself why are you constantly listening to that do you want to feel like the victim do you want someone like Nanny Max to come along and give you his version of a solution that has not changed in in over a decade seriously when you look at some listen to what he said back in 2007 to what he's saying now it's still the same thing except this time he's applying those things to Danny Dictator you know the breach of trust and the fiduciary trust and the tribal laws and you know the sovereignty and the rights and the oppression of the people and the tyranny and the corruption of the system and oh don't forget I've been telling you for years I've been trying to wake people up I'm so much of a hero I've been trying so hard to wake people up and people just won't listen to me well, I tell you what, you listen to what he says, uh, like Vinnie Eastwood and him, when they get talking together, it is, ugh, I just want to reach through and st stick my hand over Vinnie's mouth to shut him up, especially when he drops his neck down and he throws his head back and, and he, he does that fake ha laugh. I mean, it's like, seriously, if he didn't look more like a, a bloody Muppet, and people people take him seriously I mean do they I don't know I'm only assuming but that Vinnie Eastwood actually was the first one that brought Max Egan out into really getting out publicly and um, he, Vinnie Eastwood was already on American Freedom Radio and he had a fairly big name 
and he brought Max Egan on for the first time. And this was back in 2011. And they're talking away, and Vinnie Eastwood is the one that said, oh, I think that we should turn the conspiracy movement into the truther movement. Because, you know, we're truthers, you know, we're searching for the truth. So fast forward to 2020, and the people that Vinnie Eastwood infected and, and like ones like him, that now there's the truther movement, that now these people that say they are, you know, um, the truth of movement or conspiracy theorists and they've got the truth right, they're now putting down the truth of movement that they actually named in the first place. And they're putting forward that the truth of movement has got it all wrong, they don't listen, they are always got their one perspective and they won't listen to them and take on their perspective or agree with them so thereby you know they're wrong and everything that comes out of Vinnie and Max's mouth for every reason on why you know the truth uh, movement that they're talking about is wrong is exactly the same reasons I could say about them and so before you buy into anything before you buy into Max Egan's <laughs> ne a negative narrative before you buy into anything that he's selling, consider the Ken O'Keefe scam. And uh, as I said in my first video, I was going to do this sequentially, but I'm actually waiting on some information to come through from someone that might relate to the earlier years and add more to this. I, as I said, there's a lot more to add to this. I will go into detail more about the companies and the people involved, the named members, the known members that aren't anonymous, the actual setup of the um, three-tier system and the current way that, uh, and the, the companies that they're using to hide it behind. The only one I was missing was the trust for the Minjimbul, which was the replacement for the Bulla Bulla Community Trust. Uh, but then I thought, well, if you're going to change it to anything, what would it be? And it's like, well, to me, logically, the only thing they've actually left off nightcap in all the other registrations, but it's on the website, and what they promote is the Minjimbal part, because ultimately that is the core part of the community. It is tribal law, and you will be giving yourself over to tribal law as well as... As soon as you set foot off that property, you will be under Australian law as well. Anyway, I'm going to leave that. It's probably a really long one. I can make other videos, <laughs> and I will. Anyway, catch you next time.